Welcome, family of God, to another teaching installment of When the Temple in Heaven is Open, Everything Will Change. Get ready to dive deep into God's holy word as we discover his gems and jewels, where the Bible tells us it is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but it is the honor of kings to search it out, as we see how God declares the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, things not yet done, saying his counsel shall stand and he will do all of his good pleasure. The Holy Spirit has a treat for us today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Numbers chapter 10. Let's begin at verse one. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, make two silver trumpets for yourself. You shall make them of hammered work. You shall use them for calling the congregation and for directing the movements of the camp. When they blow both of them, all the congregation shall gather before you at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. Mm. Turn with me to verse 35. Numbers chapter 10. So it was, whenever the ark set out, so it was, whenever the ark set out, that Moses said, Rise up, O Lord. Mm. Let your enemies be scattered, and let those who hate you flee before you. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Psalm 68. Psalm 68. Verse one, let God arise. Mm. Let his enemies be scattered. Let those also who hate him flee before him. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, the savior of our souls, the great I am, the Aleph and the Tav. You are the sinless lamb of God who has taken away the sin of the world. And all we have to do is accept your invitation to come to receive forgiveness of sins and everlasting life. And so we thank you, Lord, for electing us and predestinating us before the foundations of the world to be set apart, to be sanctified for your glory, to be a vessel of honor. We thank you, Lord, for renewing our minds as we have called out to you to forgive us of all of our sin. And we've placed our faith in you and we trust in you. And we thank you for the cleansing that you provide by the shed blood that you provided on the cross at Calvary. Even though our sins be red like crimson, yet shall the blood of Jesus wash them whiter than snow. Lord God, you've taken away our sin as far as the east is from the west. No longer to be ever remembered in your sight. You blotted out like a thick cloud all of our transgressions. You've cast all of our sins into the depths of the sea. And so, Lord, you've wrought so great a salvation. All we can do is bow the knee and worship you forever and ever and ever. Because you, O oh Lord, are worthy of all the praise. Even though you sit so high, Lord God, you are the most high. Yet, you got so low. Mm. You, the creator, became like one of us, a creature. You put on human flesh in order to be our Gaal, our redeemer. You put on human flesh to come into the world, not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. You put on human flesh in order that you might give your life as a ransom for many you put on human flesh and you are holy, harmless, undefiled, and yet separate from sinners. You put on human flesh because it behooved you to become like unto your brethren except without sin. You put on human flesh. And it was written by the prophet Isaiah through the power of the Holy Spirit that dwelt in him that your name would be called Emmanuel. That being interpreted is God with us. Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Lord God, we can't wait for your ark to set out once again 
and for your voice to sound, which is the sound of a trumpet. And on that day, your assembly, your pieces of furniture, the table of showbread and the menorah will be caught up in the clouds to meet you in the air as you bring us before the ancient of days in the clouds of heaven. And we can't wait when you arise, O oh Lord, <laughs> when you stand up. Mm. And everybody who's found in you will never be moved. Lord God, our, our, our hope is in you. Our hope is in only you. There, there, there's no one else. Who else can we turn to? Who, where else can we go? <laughs> we can't hew out cisterns where no water is. We've done that. And so we come to you, the fountain of living waters, and we drink freely forever. And so, Lord, we thank you for the satiation of our souls with the word of life. We thank you, Lord, for the bread of life. We thank you for the nourishment that you provide for us at all times as we come to you, following hard after you down this narrow road because you are in us and we are in you. And as long as we abide, we uh, bear much fruit. And nothing could ever separate us from this union because this is the union that you have wrought because of your amazing grace. Oh, Lord, we rest. We rest in your finished work. All who come to you have ceased from our own works as you have done from yours. And so we rest, oh, Lord, we rest. We rest and we say, let God be true and every man a liar. And so now as we're resting before your feet, seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, our Lord, we pray, oh Lord, that you would fill up our empty vessels as we've decreased so that you can increase, that you would fill us to the full so that our cup would run over with the seven spirits of God, mm. the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of the Lord is upon us and the spirit of the fear of yod heh vav -Hey, for that is the beginning of wisdom. Lord God, our minds are stayed on you. Our hearts have been engrafted with your word, which is able to save our souls. Our eyes are fixed on you, the author and finisher of our faith, and our ears are open to your word because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so we thank you in advance for what you're about to teach us. As we rest before your feet, waiting to receive that word from heaven, which comes from you with power and all authority. Because forever is your word settled in heaven. Lord God, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem and we pray in your holy and righteous name, the name that is above all names, Jesus, the Messiah. Amen. Well, hallelujah, saints of God. It's so good to be back with another teaching installment of when the temple in heaven is open, everything will change. And we have such a fantastic teaching today that's going to build off of this teaching that I did through the power of the Holy Spirit about the six cities of refuge. Amen. And so I want to show you on this whiteboard how these six cities of refuge show a beautiful picture of our progression, right? Of our, of our progression as we make our procession led by the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, into the Father's house, which is going to tie in to Psalm 68. It's just, I mean, I'm just, you know, it's, I'm always just like astounded by the wisdom of God. I mean, how, how can somebody think that they could be smarter than God? I don't get it. What was that dragon thinking? What was that dragon thinking to think that he could outsmart the one who has all wisdom? There, there's no counsel. There's no understanding. There's no wisdom against him. He, he already knows what you're going to do before you do it. <laughs> I mean, does that not compute with people? How can you beat somebody that's already at the finish line? He, he, he was already at the start line before you got there. And he's already at the finish line before you get there. I mean, the fight is fixed. How can you ever win? Unless you're in him. And we've already won. Amen. And so I just marvel. right? I just, 
I just give him all praise and all glory and all honor because you just can't lose if you know Jesus Christ, right? If you know the son of man, right? If you know uh, the savior that died on the cross so that we can live with him forever, if you know the lamb of God who has taken away the sin of the world, I mean, you talk about joy. No wonder Paul said, rejoice. And again, I say, rejoice, right? You got, we got to rejoice. We have to just say hallelujah, amen, because when you know that you know that you know, you know, amen. And so I want to show you, according to what thus saith the Lord, how Psalm 68 that I put a star by shows our procession <laughs> into the Father's house, and it all ties into the six cities of refuge. Right. The six cities of refuge, because this is such a beautiful picture. This is such a beautiful picture that only God could do. Right? Only only God could paint this picture. Amen. And so. The first thing I want to show you is how the six cities of refuge, as you look at them in order, they go from. The wilderness, which is on the ground, a plain country, and it goes up to the mountain. Amen. It goes up to the mountain. It starts in Bezer in the wilderness, and we end in the mountains of Hebron. Watch, watch this, watch this. It's such a beautiful picture because this is this is going to show you how Jesus Christ comes like lightning from east to west when he descends from heaven, right? When Jesus Christ descends from heaven, here goes the cloud, right? He he's the Gaal. Gaal has a numerical value, gematria value of 34. Gimel, 3, Aleph, 1, Lamed, 30, right? So Gaal has a gematria value of 34. Here he is with the golden crown on his head, right? And 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18 tell us about the pre-tribulation rapture, right? For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, right? Here he goes, riding on a cloud. He's descending uh, from heaven with a shout, first trumpet, with the voice of the archangel, right? That's Michael, you know, uh, Matthew 25, right? Behold, the bridegroom comes, go ye out to meet him, right? Uh, Revelation chapter 7, uh, seal the servants of God in their foreheads, right? Revelation chapter 10, right? Uh, he cries out with the voice of a lion, then the seven thunders utter their voice. And with the trump of God. Right. Second trumpet. Right. Last trump. We see the same pattern in Revelation chapter one and chapter four. Remember when John was on the island of Patmos. Right. And he was in the spirit on the Lord's day and he heard the risen savior, Jesus Christ, the glorified Christ. And when he heard his voice, that was the voice like the sound of a trumpet. Right. And he turned around to see who he was, right? He fell down dead, right? And so that first trumpet, which was the voice of Jesus Christ, represents the dead in Christ rising first. And then you turn to Revelation chapter four, hallelujah. And immediately John is caught up to the father's house when the door to heaven is open. And that voice that he heard at the first, which was like the voice of a trumpet says, come up here. So, that represents those of us who are alive and remain, right? God is always showing this pattern, right? Same thing that we learned with the last teaching, amen? With the six cities of refuge, Moses set up the first three cities by the command of God on the east side of the Jordan, right? Bezer, Ramoth, Golan, right? And in Deuteronomy chapter four, we read, how Moses says that he can't cross over because of what happened in striking the rock, right? When God told him to speak to the rock. And so because of his lack of reverence for the Holy One of Israel, because he messed up the tithe, the rock is Christ and he's only going to be struck once. And so because of his disobedience, Moses wasn't allowed to enter into the promised land. And so he had to die on the east side of the Jordan. And so these first three cities that he set up in Deuteronomy chapter four, by the command of God, 
represent the dead in Christ rising first because Jesus Christ is coming like lightning from east to west. Right? He's coming like lightning from east to west. People, people just don't understand the simplicity of the word of God. Keep it simple, saint. Right? When you understand the simplicity of the word of God, when you understand how God never contradicts himself, it's always going to be the same story. We have to go from east to west. Bottom line. Amen. And so, and the dead in Christ has to rise first. Amen. And the blessing has to come before the curse. We're going to see that today again. And so, the dead in Christ rise first, east side of the Jordan. And then, as the waters part, right, the Jordan River is <laughs> so beautiful. As the waters part, right, for those of us who are alive and remain, amen, when uh, the spirit is hovering over the waters, right? Okay. When the spirit, the dove is hovering over the waters, right? And he says, let light be, right? The waters above are going to be separated from the waters below. Those of us who have oil, let light be. Those of us who have living water, the Holy Spirit in us, right? All of us are going to be caught up alive, right? And translated in a twinkling of an eye. Mm. And that represents on the west side of the Jordan River that Joshua was commanded to set up in Joshua chapter 20, right? And Joshua, right, he was one of only two, the other being Caleb, right, that was allowed to enter into the promised land alive from those who were in the wilderness wanderings, right, for 40 years. Because everybody else, 20 years old and upward, died in the wilderness for those 40 years because they believed the evil report of the 10 spies, right? So Joshua, who is alive, represents all of us who are alive on the west side of the Jordan when the waters part and... We get caught up. Amen. It's such a beautiful picture. Who can write a story like this? But it gets better. Right. It gets better because today I want to show you something. I want to show you something about this progression that ties into everything. Right. Because when Jesus Christ descends from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God. Amen. When the dead in Christ rise first, amen, the progression begins from the ground, right? He's going to call everybody who died in faith out of the dust. And then we progress upwards, right, to the place of safety, Mount Zion, the city of refuge, right? So look at this. Turn with me to Deuteronomy. We're just laying the framework. We're just laying the framework for this. Because uh, this foundation, which is so secure, is so, is so beautiful. I mean, don't you just love the word of God and praise God that the word of God is a person? His name is Jesus Christ. Mm. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Look at this. Deuteronomy chapter 4. I'll begin at verse 41. Then Moses set apart three cities on this side of the Jordan toward the rising of the sun that the manslayer might flee there who kills his neighbor unintentionally without having hated him in times past and that by fleeing to one of these cities, he might live. Bezer in the wilderness on the plateau of the Reubenites, right? So Bezer in the wilderness, wilderness plateau, that's a flat ground. So it begins with calling the dead in Christ out the ground, right? That's just the tip of the iceberg. And then the next place is Ramoth and Gilead. Ramoth means uh, heights, right? Lofty place. So we're, 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 pro we're progressing upwards now. Right? We're, we're progressing upwards, right? The, the dead in Christ are rising from the ground and, and they're being brought up to, to, to a lofty height, right? They're being brought up to the heights. And then he says... And Golan in Bashan of the Manassites. Well, you know about the Golan Heights. You hear about it all the time. Well, this is where uh, this is at. Golan and Bashan, right? So those are the mountains, right? So 
It goes from the ground, these are in the wilderness, to Ramoth, to the lofty heights, right, to Bashan, right, where Golan is at, the Golan heights, the mountains. So we're making a progression upwards, right? And that's the dead in Christ, right? And then Golan, there's a star there because we're going to break that down when we get to Psalm 68. Golan means um, captivity and, and captives, right? You've heard that verse, you know, when he ascended on high and led captivity captive, but I'm already spilling the beans. But wait till we get to Psalm 68, because it's such a beautiful picture. Amen. So we're seeing the progression. The dead in Christ are rising first, and we're all going up. Because when the Lord Jesus Christ descends from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God, he's not going to touch the earth, but he's going to call the dead in Christ up first to meet him in the air. And then all of us who are alive and remain are also going to be caught up in the clouds to meet him in the air. Amen. And then we see the next three cities, which is us, right? Those of us who are alive and remain. Kedesh, Shechem, Hebron. Turn with me to Joshua chapter 20. All these cities are in the mountains, right? All these cities are in the mountains. Hallelujah. Because we're going up. It's a procession upwards, right? We're meeting Christ uh, in the air as we assemble in the clouds. I mean, you can't make it up even if you try. But look, look how this all breaks down, no child of God. I pray that you're going to be blessed today. I pray that God is going to speak to your heart and minister to you, right? The sureness of the pre-tribulation rapture. Don't let these wolves out here lie to you. And I know, uh, I know you're not going to be lied to. Amen. I know, <laughs> praise God, that the members of the body of Christ that God leads here, you know, you're, you, you're, you're rock solid in your faith and uh, Christ is in you and, and you're in Christ and, and you know the prophecies and you know that the blessing has to come before the curse. You know that the pre-tribulation rapture is 100% rock solid, right? And God can't lie. So you know these things. And so praise God that he leads you here to be encouraged more so that you can use these truths. Hallelujah. The, the, uh, the extra and extra and extra revelation, the more sharpening of your sword because iron sharpens iron so that you can use this, these teachings to show others, right? And, and we, uh, we squash all doubts, right? Right. We, 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 we stop all mouths, right? With, with what thus saith the Lord. Right? And after one or two admonitions for people who want to debate and, they want to continue to debate. Well, hey, we just shake off the dust of our feet and we say, hey, let God be true and every man a liar. That's what that's what I do. You know, I don't I don't you know, people be trying to come at me and, and try to goad me. No, I'm not falling for it. I'm going to tell you through the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to tell you. Right. But you trying to goad me, <laughs> you trying to goad me, you know, you trying to goad me now. Right. So so that so that. So that I could get stirred up in my flesh, right? You want to get me stirred up so, so we could have not a debate. You want to argue, right? You want to argue. And you want me to get stirred up, right? So that I could get in my flesh, God forbid, right? And I don't want to do that. So I'm not, I'm not going to partake in the goading. Right? I'm going to tell you what it is. It is what it is. Jesus Christ, he's Lord, and he's coming down on the clouds, pre-tribulation rapture. I don't care what you got to say, Okay. Now, if you don't believe it, hey, take it up with God, <laughs> okay? But I believe it, amen, with all my heart, amen? No doubt whatsoever, okay? James Smith, you got any doubt about the pre-tribulation rapture? Nope. God forbid I had some doubt. Mm. God forbid I had doubt about the blessed hope. God forbid, okay, God forbid. <laughs> so help me God, amen? <laughs> Joshua chapter 20, all of us who are alive and remain, here goes the next three cities that Joshua set up by the commandment of God, right? Verse one, and the Lord spoke to Joshua saying, speak to the children of Israel saying, appoint for yourselves cities of refuge of which I spoke to you through Moses, that the slayer who kills a person accidentally or unintentionally may flee there and they shall be your refuge from the avenger of blood. Amen. So remember, the avenger of blood is the same Hebrew word, ga'al, that redeemer is. Right? Ga'al 
means redeemer, right? And the all also means avenger. Hallelujah. And because Jesus Christ is both the redeemer and the avenger of blood, hallelujah, whatever you say about him, right? whatever you say about him is going to determine your refuge, right? <laughs> whatever you say about him, it's going to determine your refuge on the cloudy and dark day. There's only two foundations, right? Well, you can think you slick, right? You can think you slick. You can, you, you can hang outside the gates. You can hang outside. Okay, you can hang outside the gates. <laughs> you think you slick? Mm. You think you slick? You can hang outside the gates of the city of refuge. You hanging outside the gates. Okay. You want to play looky low? Okay. You want to play looky loo? I'm outside the gates. Mm. You want to play looky loo? I'm outside the gates. Uh oh. And then when the cloudy and dark day comes, I'm outside the gates. Why I'm shaking? You outside the gates. Why are you shaking? <laughs> you outside the gates. Why are you shaking? Okay. Knees a little knocky. Mmm. Need, need a little knocking now. You outside the gate. Mr. and Mrs. Looking Lou. Mm. Joshua chapter 20, <laughs> verse 7. So they appointed Kedish in Galilee. <laughs> Kedish, right, means sanctuary, right? Kedish means sanctuary. Where are we going? We're going to the Mikdash, 444, right? The sanctuary, the place of refuge, Mount Zion. And look where Kedish is at. Kedish in Galilee in the mountains of Naphtali. Remember, we're going up. We, uh, the dead in Christ started with Bezer in the wilderness, in the plain country. He's calling everybody who died in faith out the dust first. <laughs> you can't make it up. He's calling everybody who died in faith out the dust. Right? He starts in the wilderness. My goodness. Watch, watch when you see this, though. It's so beautiful. He starts in the wilderness, in the plain country. Oh, in the plain country. Mm. When Jesus Christ descends, he ain't touching the ground, though. No. Oh, no. He ain't touching the ground. Not yet. Uh -uh. Right. He ain't touching the ground. He's coming down on the cloud. He's going to assemble all the saints in the air. Hallelujah. When we're caught up in the clouds. Amen. <laughs> you see, but he starts the procession. Mm. He starts the procession. To the high and lofty place by getting those who died in faith out the dust. Mm. Peter, Paul, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, John, <laughs> right? And all the saints who died before us, our relatives who died in faith, all of them, right? all of them getting out the dust, right? So he starts in Beza, in the wilderness, in the plain country. And then we start to go up, right? We start to go up in uh, with the names, amen, of the cities of refuge. Because the next city is Ramoth, which means heights, which means lofty place. Everybody's going up, going up yonder, right? To be with our Lord, amen. <laughs> and then Golan in Bashan is the mountains, right? <laughs> The Golan Heights, Golan in Bashan. Golan means captivity, captive. Right? He's taking all the captives, captivity. Right? He, he's, taking, he's taking the captives. Right? right? He's setting us free. Hallelujah. He's setting us free from mortality. Oh, he's setting us free. Mm. Because on this day, all of us who are found in Christ as the first fruits, we put on immortality. Death is swallowed up in victory. Mm. Then you got the looky loo, they outside. <laughs> they say, yeah, I'm outside. <laughs> they outside the gate. Well, they outside the gate. Right? They outside the gate. Listen to Klaus Schwab, right? They're outside the gate, listen to Elon Musk. Mm. <laughs> they outside the gate. <laughs> you seen these Apple Vision Pros, these Apple Vision things, right? <laughs> they're outside the gate uh, with their goggles on. Okay. They're outside the gate playing Pokemon. 
Mm. Outside the gate, playing Pokemon, they got their Apple Vision Pro on. Mm. Outside the gate. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm reminded, that's why I put that picture up there. Right? I'm reminded, right, of The Economist magazine, right? The world in 2017, right? You know, these globalists, right? These, these World Economic Forum people, right? The, these people who uh, go to <laughs> Klaus Schwab for advice, right? These people who go to Klaus Schwab for, for ideas, right? These people who are in this, you know, club of the elites. <clears throat> they got this Economist magazine cover in 2017, and one of those, you know, one of those tarot cards, which is witchcraft, right? Because they serve Satan. They got tarot cards on there. <laughs> and one of those tarot cards was the magician, <laughs> right? And the magician, he over there, right? You know, he's coming. <laughs> and we see, we see, we see all the preps, right? They got the Apple Vision Pro. <laughs> and you see the magician on the cover with, you know, you know, with, with the Apple Vision Pro. <laughs> And he's over there making houses, right? Making copycats because the house is us, right? What's inside your house, right? <laughs> Jesus Christ came by and he swept and garnished your house, but you outside now, right? And no one took up residence. Mm. He came by your house, mm. swept and garnished. <laughs> he said, knock, knock. You said, I'm outside. Uh-uh. Jesus Christ stood at the door. He knocked, right? He said, uh-uh, I'm outside, right? So now you want to go over here with Claus Schwab outside, right? House swept and garnished. Mm. Well, here comes seven more now. Okay, and they coming this time. Here comes seven more. You outside. And now you really outside. Apocalypse. Mm. Here comes seven more. Okay. Right? Here comes seven more now. <laughs> and, and, and this time, okay, and this, and this time when they come, ooh, no restraint. Mm -mm. This time when they come, no restraint. Right? No, 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 no more church houses on the corner. Uh-uh. No more quote unquote faith healers, right? <laughs> that you could go to, right? No, 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 no more shenanigans. Uh-uh. Magician. Magician here with the with the Apple Vision Pro. He making houses, mm, right? <laughs> and on 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 the on the house making machine, you got the number thirty, right? <laughs> number thirty, right? The number thirty, the letter in the Hebrew that has the gematria value for thirty is Lamed, right? That's the shepherd staff, right? <laughs> He's the worthless shepherd, mm. and that shepherd staff means to teach. Lamed means to teach. <laughs> so he's gonna teach y'all the goats a lesson. Make a copycat. He got the Apple Vision Pro, right? He got his hand raised up with infinity. You wanna quote unquote live forever? You know, says the magician, aka the dragon, right? Killing the Antichrist, right? And then he got his he got his henchman, right? False prophet. There you go. You outside. You got caught lacking. No oil. You outside, you got caught lacking. Okay. God had mercy upon you because you wasn't in Babylon the Great. Okay. It's a big world. You wasn't in Babylon the Great. And you were someplace else on the planet. And by the grace of God, that pale horse, he passed you by. We passed you by. <laughs> okay. And now look at you. Now look at you, trembling. <laughs> Baldness on your head, sackcloth on your loins, cave right. stand up straight, knees all knocky, hands all limpy. Okay, hot, little melty. Mm. You outside. Okay, apocalypse. Okay, now, 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 here comes the magic show. Here the magician. Okay, magician say, hear ye, hear ye. No dog, little cloudy. Magician say, hear ye, hear ye. 
Magician say, hear ye, hear ye. We making houses. Mm. We making houses? And the house is? Mm. Iron mixed with clay. Okay. Now, these are the rules, terms and conditions, <laughs> says the magician. Yeah, here are the rules. Okay. Got seven years. These are the rules. Number one, better not say his name. Know that. Better not say his name. Better not say it. Rule number one. Rule number two. You making houses. 666. Rule number three. Bow down. Worship. Magician. Okay. He gonna, he gonna have a magic show. Apocalypse. Mm. You see, but for those of us who are inside, amen. <laughs> for those of us who are in Christ, hallelujah. For those of us who are in him and he's in us, and because we are in his hands, hallelujah. At the time when the Gaal comes down as the Redeemer mm, to change our lowly bodies like unto his glorious body, amen. It's gonna happen real soon. On that day, there's gonna be a there's gonna be a procession. Mm. There's gonna be a procession to the place of refuge. Amen. Mm. All of us who have fleed uh, to Him, right, and have been sheltered under the shadow of His wings, right. All of us who have Psalm ninety one as our protection, right, because Jesus Christ is our shield. All of us who have fled to Jesus Christ mm. at the day of the procession, dead in Christ rise first. <laughs> Bishan, uh, Bezer, Ramoth, Golan, dead in Christ rise first. Then we get to Kedesh, which is the sanctuary. Kedesh begins all of us who are alive and remain. That's the 444 code. And of course, it's, it's the fourth, it's the fourth city. Kuwinki uh, ain't door open. Mm. Kedish means sanctuary. Mm. Kedish means sanctuary. It's the fourth city name. So you know the doors open to where the sanctuary. Mm. Four 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 can't make it up now. Kedish means sanctuary. Fourth city. <laughs> that fourth city begins. Those of us who are alive and remain door open all about mm. door open all about it. Amen. Can't make it up, child of God. Fifth city, Shechem. Joshua chapter 20, verse 7. Shechem in the mountains of Ephraim. Again, it's all the mountains, right? We're going up, right? Golan Mountains, Kedish Mountains, Shechem Mountains, right? <laughs> and Kirjath Arba, which is Hebron in the mountains of Judah. Mm. Finally, Hebron, which is in the mountains of Judah. We're going up. Right? What's our destination? Mount Zion. <laughs> the Gaal, Jesus Christ, as the Redeemer, comes down on the clouds. Right, coming like lightning from east to west, dead in Christ rise first, beginning with those who are in the dust, Beza in the wilderness. Get up, first trump. Mm. We go into the high, lofty place, Ramoth. Right. He gonna lead captivity captive, Golan. Right. And all of us who are alive and remain, waiting for the door to open, he says, Kedesh is open, the sanctuary. <laughs> right? All of us who have uh, been obedient to what thus saith the Lord. Amen. We've cast all of our cares upon him because his burden is light. Ooh, his yoke is easy. Shechem. <laughs> Shechem is the neck. It means between the shoulders. It means to carry a burden. All of us have been obedient to what Jesus Christ told us to do. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. He's carried our burdens. Amen. We could call him Lord, Lord. And Shechem, <laughs> the, the interesting thing about Shechem as well, 
Shechem is in the mountains, right? It says Shechem. Hallelujah. This is Joshua chapter 20, verse 7. Shechem is in the mountains of Ephraim. You know what mountains are there? <laughs> Those mountains are Gerizim and Ebal, right? Shechem is right between Mount Gerizim and Mount Ebal. You know what those two mountains are? That's the mountain of the blessing and the mountain of the cursing, right? Because it's the blessed hope. Amen. All of us who are blessed, amen, we get to receive the blessed hope. Hallelujah. All of us who have taken his yoke upon ourselves, right? All of us who have taken his burden, which is light, right? To decrease so that he can increase, to rest so that he can walk through us, right? All of us who are obedient to what thus saith the Lord, we are on the mountain of blessing. We're going up, right? Final destination, right? Final destination in this world, Hebron. Mm. Final destination, this world, last stop. Mm. Last stop, this universe, Hebron. Mm. We got so much to say about Hebron. <laughs> I've talked a lot about Hebron, right? Last stop, right? This is, la <laughs> this is the last stop, Kirjath Arba, right? Last stop, Hebron. Mm -hmm. Last stop, all about what? Okay. You know about Hebron. You know about Hebron, child of God. I mean, we go down the list with Hebron. Well, last stop before we go to Mount Zion. Okay, he coming like lightning from east to west, Jesus Christ, right? Because he's the son of David. And just like David, he has to rule, right? In Hebron for seven years, six months. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he got to rule from Hebron. Last stop. Right? Last stop, this universe, Hebron. The son of David, Jesus Christ, has to rule from Hebron seven years, six months. Oh, but the critic says, ain't no such thing as a pre-tribulation rapture. Mm. But the scoffers are saying, ain't no such thing as no pre-tribulation rapture. Mm. But the mockers say, ain't no such thing as no pre-tribulation rapture. Okay. But God says, waiting for that blessed hope. <laughs> The glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. What you waiting for? Right. You must be waiting for the magician, right? right. You, you must be waiting for the magician because you over here trying to make your preps, right? Thinking that you're going to have some type of ammunition, right? Thinking that you're going to have some type of provisions, right? Because your eyes are focused on earthly things, right? To endure the time of Jacob's trouble, which there is no, there, there's no type. I've talked about this all the time. There's no type. There, there's nothing you can do to prepare, right? If you're outside, right? If you're outside, there's nothing you can do to prepare. Uh-uh. Right. And for one, if you, if you outside in Babylon the Great, forget about it. I mean, top, top, no wonder, no, no wonder. Everything just makes this, so, everything just makes perfect sense, right? When you rest in Jesus. Everything just makes perfect sense. I thank you, Lord. You outside in Babylon the Great. So no, no wonder, right? And, and they're and they the most vocal too. They be vocal. They be vocal in Babylon the Great too, right? Because God says Babylon the Great's the most proud. Look how it's going to tie in though. It's going to tie into this board. Babylon the Great's the most proud, God says. Right? And Babylon the Great, right? You outside in Babylon the Great, right? You outside in Babylon the Great. On the day when Jesus Christ comes like lightning from east to west, you outside. Right? And the light that's in you is darkness. And Jesus Christ says, how great is that darkness? Mmm. Yep. All I could do is just <laughs> plead with you right here, right now. Get inside the ark of Jesus Christ. Get inside the ark of Jesus Christ because you have no hope. There's no hope. I'm not going to sugarcoat nothing. There's no hope. Mm -mm. No hope whatsoever. I'm going to prove it again with this bow. I'm going to prove it right now. I'm going to let God be true in every, mind, every man alive. There's no hope. 
If you are outside, right, you're not in the city of refuge. You have to be inside the city of refuge. Remember, this is what, this is what the whole teaching is about, the city of refuge, right? As long as you are inside the city of refuge, when the Gaal comes, because he's not only the redeemer, he's also the avenger of blood, everybody inside the city of refuge, Ramoth, right? Bezer, Golan, Kedesh, Shechem, Hebron. Everybody inside the city of refuge will not meet the Gaal, who is God, Jesus, as the avenger of blood. He can't take vengeance upon everybody who's safe inside the place of refuge. Right? We've been forgiven. Amen. We're safe. And so when the Gaal appears, he comes to redeem all those in the city of refuge by giving us our glorified body, the last step in our salvation process, right? Justification, the moment we believed, right? Sanctification, <laughs> given to us the moment we believe and we're living it out, right? Purifying ourselves just as he is pure, right? <laughs> Decreasing so that he can increase. Right? The last step is glorification. That's what we're waiting for, the redemption of our bodies. Everybody in the city of refuge is going to be redeemed by the Gaal. Mm. But if you outside, that's what I'm talking about. If you outside, right? if you outside, <laughs> if you outside, Beza, okay. if you outside, Ramoth, if you outside, Golan, if you outside, Kish. If you outside Shechem, if you outside Hebron, mm. and you in Babylon the Great, well, what's going to happen? Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. Did you know this? <laughs> Did you know Babylon in the Old Testament is Babel, right? You know that. Babel is Bet, Bet, Lamed. Bet is two. Bet is two. That's four. Lamed is three. Mm. <laughs> it has the, Babel has the same numerical value, 34, which is Babylon. Babel, Babylon, has the same numerical value as the Gaal. Mm. And I think God just does this because, you know, he's God. Who, who can figure him out? <laughs> it's just, I mean, I can show you just, just the plain connections. I'm going to show it to you through the power of the Holy Spirit. But I was just thinking, you know, you put 34 and 34 together. What's that? 68. <laughs> and we haven't even got to Psalm 68 yet. <laughs> I mean, Psalm 68, phew, it's a mind blower. Watch it. But look at this. Here comes a head-on collision, right? The Gaal coming down, right? And the first place that the Gaal comes to is Bezer in the wilderness. My goodness. Who else is in the wilderness? Right? <laughs> Who else is in the wilderness? Okay. First, hey, first stop. Okay. Oh, but you outside. Look at you. <laughs> I'm talking about first stop. Okay. He coming, he coming, he coming as the redeemer. Everybody in Biza in the wilderness. Right. He's coming as redeemer. Okay. Biza in the wilderness. First stop. <laughs> but who else is in the wilderness outside? Mm. Who else is in the wilderness outside? They ain't in Biza. Uh -uh. They ain't in Biza. Mm -mm. Who else is inside the wilderness? Right. Revelation chapter 17. You can't make it up even if you try. <laughs> I'm telling you, child of God. Revelation chapter 17, verse 3. Who else is in the wilderness outside? Mm. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. Uh-oh. You mean to tell me there's somebody outside? Okay. There's somebody outside when the Gaal comes down to Beza in the wilderness. There's somebody outside? Ooh-wee. Who outside? Uh-uh. Who outside? Okay. So he carried me away in the spirit 
into the wilderness and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and, and ten horns. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Mm. Full of names of blasphemy? You mean to tell me that there's somebody, a woman, okay, in the wilderness that's full of names of blasphemy riding the beast? Uh-oh. What's going on there? What's going on there? Okay. What's going on now? The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead, a name was written. Mystery. You didn't have no sheen, huh? You had a name written on your forehead, but you didn't have no sheen. You were outside. Mm. You outside. You ain't got no word of God in you. You full of blasphemy. You got a golden cup in your hand full of abominations. You outside. Ooh, you hooping it up too. You outside, you over there getting drunk. Okay. You over there, you over there getting drunk, riding on the beast outside. Okay. And here comes the Gaal. Okay. Here comes the Gaal. Full of joy. We he full of joy. Mm. He full of joy because it's the blessed hope. Blessing coming first. Right? Everybody in Beza in the wilderness. Get up. Mm. First Trump. <laughs> right. but, 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 but there's somebody outside in the wilderness, though. There's somebody outside in the wilderness that's on the sand. Uh-oh. Somebody outside in the wilderness on the sand. Mm. No, no, no seal of God on their forehead either. Uh-uh. Right? No word of God inside them. Number blasphemy. Mm. God said on this woman's forehead was a name written. Mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, 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 now something has to happen. Right. Now something has to happen. Look at this. <laughs> Verse 6. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of of the martyrs of Jesus. Okay, so now there's a woman outside, not in the city of refuge. <laughs> the woman ain't inside Beza in the wilderness. No, this woman is riding on a beast in the wilderness. So she outside. Okay. So she's not going to know the Gaal as the Redeemer. Uh-uh. She outside. Right. No protection. Not in the city of refuge. Uh-uh. She riding the beast. In the next description... After we get her name, is that she's drunk with blood. Uh-oh. <laughs> she's drunk with blood? Oh, she a blood drinker. Uh-oh. You mean to tell me Babylon the Great, a blood drinker? Uh-oh. Well, now the Gaal has to act out the avenger of blood. Okay. The Gaal has to act out as the avenger of blood. Okay. Ooh. You don't act out too now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you mean to tell me the first place? Mm. You mean to tell me the first place? First place. You mean to tell me? First place. <laughs> first place. That the Avenger of Blood deals with. Babylon the Great? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. First place. <laughs> and, and, and when he deals with Babylon the Great, well, he was outside. Hey, no hope. Mm. He was outside riding the beast. No hope. He was outside riding the beast. You, th you thought everything was A-OK, -okay, riding the beast. Mm. You was outside. Riding the beast, thinking everything, everything. Mm. Right. <laughs> but you didn't even see it coming. That's the cold part. <laughs> you didn't even see it coming. Mm. You didn't even see it coming. Even though no other nation outside of Israel has had as much light as Babylon the Great. Mm. But that's not all. Look at this. Look at this. Turn with me to Isaiah. 
Right? Let, let, let's get to supplemental scriptures. Amen. Because out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, everything's established. Look at this. Right? Because the Gaal is connected. Right? In the Old Testament as coming as the avenger of blood. Right? When he deals with Babylon. Right? Because Babel, which is Babylon, has the same numerical value as the all. Amen. So there's going to be people who are redeemed as well. Remember, there's going to be people who are, who are redeemed as well. The redemption happens first. <clears throat> same thing we see in the book of Revelation chapter 18. Right? There's going to be people, right, who are going to be alive and remain in Babylon the Great. Right? You see this in Revelation chapter 18. Right? Verse 1. After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having, a, having great authority. And the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Mm. lest you share in her sins and lest you receive of her plagues, right? Those of us who are alive and remain, we're all caught up. Hallelujah. We're all caught up. Amen. All of us who are alive and remain, we're going up. Amen. We're going up. Amen. We're going up to the sanctuary when the door opens. Amen. We've obeyed God's voice. We're on the mountain of blessing, right? Shechem, right? We're on the mountain of blessing, Mount Gerizim. Amen. Jesus Christ has carried our sorrows. He's taken our burdens, right? He's given us an easy yoke, right? Because his burden is light. We've given it all to him. We're resting. And so we go to last stop, Hebron, right? Last stop, Hebron, like Samson portrayed. <laughs> Samson took the city gates of Gaza. Right, the doorpost, the mezuzah. He took the mezuzah of Gaza, right, and he walked about forty miles, <laughs> and he set the gate, the doorpost of the city of Gaza, on a hill that faced Hebron. Mm. Right, showing us the end from the beginning before it happened. Right, because when it happens. Right? The pillars have to be removed. Right? Everybody who's a mezuzah who has the seal of God on our foreheads, we're removed. Right? <laughs> we are alive and remain like Enoch. Right? Enoch walked on the earth for 65 years. 65 is the same numerical value <clears throat> of the Hebrew word for mezuzah. Let me show it to you. Mezuzah. Help me, Holy Spirit. Zion. Bob. Zion. Hey. Mezuzah. Mezuzah. Mem is 40. Zion, 7. Bob, 6. Zion, 7. Hey, 5. Amen. 40 plus 7 is 47, right? 47 plus 6 is uh, 53, right? Plus 7 is 60, plus 5, 65. That's mezuzah, right? Enoch walked with God after he had lived on the earth for 65 years, right? Then he began to walk with God for 300 years, right? When Enoch walked with God for 300 years, the Bible says that one day came and he was translated, right? <laughs> he was translated from this world to another world without seeing death, right? Just as it was in the days of Noah, Enoch, the seventh from Adam. Mm. There's going to be people alive and remain, Kedesh, Shechem, Hebron, on the west side of the Jordan who have been walking with God. Right? We're mezuzahs. Right? 
And when we walk with God, we have the word of God inside of us. We've been born again with the seal of God on our forehead, the sheen. Mm. Sheen equals 300, right? 300 plus 65 is 365. That was the total life of Enoch. Enoch didn't see death. There's going to be people just like Enoch in Kedah, Shechem, and Hebron, right? That are also 365 in the spirit, right? We're walking mezuzahs with the seal of God on our foreheads that are going to be translated like Enoch at the time when the Gaal comes down on the clouds. Mm. Right? God says this, though. Back to Babylon. <laughs> we haven't got to Psalm 68 yet. My goodness. Wait till you see Psalm 68. It's so beautiful. I think I might have to do another teaching uh, with Psalm 68 because it's just so mind-blowing. Amen. Look at, look at uh, Isaiah. Right? Isaiah 47. Back to Babylon. Right? Because the Gaal, right, he has a work to do in, in Babylon. Right? Got the same, same numerical value, right? She's an imposter, though, right? She's an imposter. She got another name written on her forehead, okay? Right? She says, I, I will never know widowhood or the loss of children. I got another name on my forehead. Says Babylon the Great. I'm an imposter, says Babylon the Great. I'm outside. Says Babylon the Great. You see it right there in the harbor. <laughs> New York City. Uh, she, she, she's right there in the harbor. There she go, Ishtar. There she go. Mm -hmm. right. right there in the harbor. Mm. <laughs> but Babylon the Great, she filled with many cities. Right? Coast to coast. No survivors. Right? Apocalypse. Mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter 47, verse 1. Come down and sit in the dust. O virgin daughter of Babylon, sit on the ground without a throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans. For you shall no more be called tender and delicate. Take the millstones and grind meal. Remove your veil. Take off the skirt. Uncover the thigh. Pass through the rivers. Your nakedness shall be uncovered. Yes, your shame will be seen. I will take vengeance and I will not arbitrate with a man. Okay. The day of vengeance is in God's heart. Right? Because now it's the year of his redeem. Right? <laughs> okay, so vengeance begins, okay, for those who are outside the cities of refuge. Right? It's all taking place like that, right? It's twinkling of an eye. Right? He's coming like lightning from east to west. There's no time to get ready, right? We're just slowing everything down, putting all the scriptures together. But remember, in real time, well, it's faster than we can blink. <laughs> if you're not caught up faster than we can blink, it's over. Okay? Uh, it, it. Help me, Holy Spirit. If you're not part of the saints that go marching in at the time of the rapture, and you get left behind in Babylon the Great, it's over. Okay, it's over. There's no escape. Right? Especially if you're in Babylon the Great, there's no escape. The Bible explicitly says it. He said, let none thereof escape. Uh -uh, no escape. Okay. God says, put yourselves in array all around Babylon the Great. Red Horse, get out that gate. Mm. Apocalypse. You, you understand the ramifications? If you're not in Mount Zion as the body of Christ and the 144,000 will be as first fruits. If you're not in the city of refuge where God is known in her palaces, right? The city of the great king in the sides of the north, Mount Zion, because the Gaal has redeemed us. If you're not in that place, looking at the lamb stand up and taking the seven sealed scroll from the ancient of days and opening it, if you're not there to see it, and you got and you got left behind outside in Babylon the Great. No escape. Okay. God said, let none thereof escape. Mm. God says, I've laid a snare for you, O Babylon, and you were not aware. 
You were found and also caught because you strove against the Lord. Right? You got caught in the trap. You didn't even know it was a trap. Right? And here come the red horse, 10 kings. Right? They just showed you. They just showed you what's going to happen. Right? They showed you a smidgen, though. <laughs> they just made a movie. Right? Featuring 666. Right? Leave the world behind. They put it all out there. Well, they put it all out there, but they just did a snippet. Oh, it's so much worse. They just sniff it. <laughs> they did a snippet. Right? Three pronged attack. Right? Blackout. Mm. Right? Blackout. Right? <laughs> and when the blackout comes, cloudy and dark day. Mm. And you get left behind from coast to coast. In the well favored Holland, it's over. And it's over forever. Right? Terrible day. Right? God said, Let none thereof escape. Okay? Let none thereof escape. Okay? Trapped. Here comes all the arrows, right? <laughs> Here comes all the arrows, right? Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean, Gulf of Mexico, Arctic Ocean. Here they all come. Where you going? All right. Red horse. Get out that gate. Where you going? God says this, verse 4. As for our Redeemer, Gaal, the Lord of hosts is his name, the Holy One of Israel. Amen. Now, as you can see, here goes the Gaal as the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Amen. Because the Gaal as the Redeemer, what's the first thing he's going to do? Right? He's coming to redeem everybody in Bezer in the wilderness. Right? Dead in Christ rise first. Mm. Right? Bezer means inaccessible spot. Dead in Christ rise first. But guess what? Right? Guess what? Right? In the twinkling of an eye when this all happens. Hmm. There's somebody else that's outside the city of refuge. Right? God says this, verse 5, sit in silence and go into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for you shall no longer be called the lady of kingdoms. So for the lady of kingdoms, who will no longer be called the lady of kingdoms, God says, get in the darkness, no light. Right? Now you get to see the Gaal as the avenger of blood. Because he's drunk with the blood of the saints and with the martyrs of Jesus Christ. Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 34. Then we're going to go to um, Psalm 68. Let me just... I pray that you've been blessed. I pray that you're learning something. I pray that God is ministering to your heart. Amen? You know, it's just such a beautiful picture. Amen? God says this, God says this, Jeremiah chapter 50, verse, I'll begin at verse 33, amen. Well, I'll begin at, let me just begin at verse 34 so we get to uh, Psalm 68. Their Redeemer is strong, Redeemer is Gaal. The Lord of hosts is his name, right? The Lord of heaven's armies, right? He will thoroughly plead their case that he may give rest to the land and disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon, right? So at the same time that he acts as the redeemer, when he comes down upon the clouds, Gaal, right? To redeem everybody who's found in him that has a seal of God. When he comes like lightning from east to west, first place he comes down to is the wilderness, Bezer in the wilderness. But there's somebody else outside, right? Not inside the place of safety is Babylon the Great. So what's he, what's he going to do? Verse 34, verse 35. A sword is against the Chaldeans, says the Lord, against the inhabitants of Babylon and against her princes and against her wise men. A sword is against the soothsayers and they will be fools. A sword is against her mighty men and they will be dismayed. A sword is against their horses, against their chariots, against all the mixed people who are in her midst. And they will become like women. A sword is against her treasures. And they will be robbed. A drought is against her waters. And they will be dried up. 
for it is the land of carved images, and they are insane with their idols. Therefore, the wild desert beasts shall dwell there with the jackals, and the ostriches shall dwell in it. It shall be inhabited no more forever, nor shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation, as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah and their neighbors, says the Lord. So no one shall reside there, nor son of man dwell in it. What God said. God said it's over forever for the well-favored harlot, the United States of America. That's it, that's all. Apocalypse. So, <clears throat> let's transition, but we're not really transitioning. I want to show you something. I want to show you something. I want to show you something about Psalm 68. Remember how we started this teaching with Numbers chapter 10 with the blowing of the two silver trumpets, <clears throat> right? When you blow the two silver trumpets, all the assembly had to assemble before the tent of meeting, right? And so in Numbers chapter 10, verse 35, the Bible tells us when the ark set out, Moses would say what? Lord, arise, right? Stand up. Look at this. Look at look at this. I mean, this is, this would be a teaching all in and of itself. What I'm about to show you through the power of the Holy Spirit. Look how beautiful this is. Amen. Look how beautiful this is, child of God. <laughs> I'm just amazed that you know what God. You know, I'm just amazed. Numbers chapter ten, verse thirty-five. So it was. Whenever the ark set out, the Mo that Moses said, rise up, O Lord, stand up. Let your enemies be scattered and let those who hate you flee before you. Right. So whenever the ark set out, mm, whenever the ark set out, God don't change. The only time that we see the ark mentioned by name in the book of Revelation is when the door to heaven is open. Right. Revelation chapter 11, verse 19. And the temple of God was opened in heaven. Door to heaven open, right? So you know what's going to happen when the door to heaven is open, right? The trump of God is going to sound, right? Twice, his voice, right? He's going to descend from heaven as the Gaal, the Redeemer. He's going to descend from heaven with a shout, trumpet. Voice of the archangel, Michael, sealed 144,000. And the trump of God, last trump, second trumpet. So at the second trumpet, everybody from Bezor to Hebron, dead in Christ, those of us who are alive and remain, we all assemble, right, <laughs> before the tent of meeting. Amen. Because Jesus Christ, who is the door, has to take us through the open door because no one comes unto the Father unless we go through him. So we all meet in the air as we assemble in the clouds. Mm. When Jesus Christ comes like lightning from east to west, right? Because whenever the ark sets out, Moses says, rise up, O Lord. The lamb stands up. Revelation chapter 5, Revelation chapter 14, right? The lamb stands up, right? Isaiah 61, right? When he takes the scroll again to begin the day of his vengeance, but the first thing that he does is he acts as the Go all as the redeemer, right? To bring the blessed hope. The lamb stands up, right? And the door to heaven is open and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. There goes the ark. So because God doesn't change, whenever the ark sets out, right? The ark is the throne of God. Whenever the ark sets out, Moses says, rise up, O Lord. Let your enemies be scattered and let those who hate you flee before you. So we know that the blessing comes first, right? When the ark sets out, Moses says, rise up, O Lord. That's the blessing. Everybody found in him on the day when God stands up, we're blessed, right? But then here comes the curse. Let your enemies be scattered and let those who hate you flee before you, right? Because when the ark of his testament is seen in his temple, we go through the open door. First thing we see, right? Revelation chapter four, 
<laughs> right? First thing we see when we go through the open door immediately, right? Twinkling of an eye, we see the ark of his testament. And then what happens? And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. Okay. Little dark, ooh, wee. Little cloudy. Okay. Little dark. Mm. Little cloudy. Okay. God got a work to do. <laughs> he got a work to do. He got a work to do. <laughs> He has, he has a work to do, sevenfold vengeance as the avenger of blood. And his first stop, first stop as the avenger of blood is somebody who's drunk. Somebody who's drunk now with blood. What, 70 million babies now? I don't know. I don't know. 70 million? I don't know how many it is. Right? Well, since like, what, 1971? I mean, <laughs> I, I don't even, you know, it's just ludicrous. Right? It's out of this world. It doesn't make any sense. 70 million, right? but God knows every single one, right? right, of saints, right, of prophets, of teachers, right, little, little people who, who didn't fulfill their destiny because their life was cut off, but praise God that they have an eternal destiny with Jesus Christ forever because they were under the age of accountability, but their blood was still shed. Babylon the Great is drunk with it. Millions upon millions upon millions drunk with it still today because she outside. She outside. Mm. Planned Parenthood outside. Right. Planned Parenthood outside. Right. Outside Planned Parenthood. Bring all your babies to Molech. God forbid. Planned Parenthood. Bring all your babies to Molech. Well, well, here comes the gall. <laughs> same numerical value, 34. Same numerical value, Babel. Right? Same place. They're in the wilderness. Right? Babel in the wilderness, but she ain't inside Beza. She ain't inside the city of refuge. She riding on the beast, thinking that she getting away with it. Uh-uh. She riding on the beast, thinking that she getting away with it. Uh-uh. Okay, here comes the gall. Here come the go. Oh, you're not in the safe. You're not in the. You're not in the safe place. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Now, now, now it's time for a sevenfold vengeance. First stop, off top, apocalypse, sudden destruction. Okay, no more Babylon the Great. Goodbye. Mm. But that's not all. Look at this. You see Psalm sixty-eight. Hallelujah. The psalmist in Psalm 68, turn me to Psalm 68, amen. In Psalm 68, the psalmist, which is a psalm of David, amen, shows this beautiful picture. And he begins with what Moses says whenever the ark steps out, right? David in Psalm 68 begins Psalm 68 quoting Numbers chapter 10, verse 35. And so this should clue you in that this is all about the rapture, right? This is all about the rapture, right? This is all about the rapture, Psalm 68. And Psalm 68 goes through everything that we went through. It goes through everything that we went through, which is the procession, right, from the cities of refuge to Mount Zion, the city of God, right? It's all about the rapture. Psalm 68. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. Verse 1. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. <laughs> let those also who hate him flee before him. Right? That's Numbers 10, 35. So you know that the ark is now setting out. Right? So here comes the rapture. Right? Here comes the rapture. And this whole psalm is about the rapture and about what happens when those who are under his feet, his enemies are scattered, right? As smoke is driven away, verse 2, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. Right? He's coming down on the clouds. <laughs> He's coming down on the clouds. One fourth of all the earth given over to the pale horse. Right? No mercy, no pity. Mm -mm. Okay. 
Let the wicked perish at the presence of God. No pity, no mercy. Apocalypse. One fourth of all the earth right away. Mm. But let the righteous be glad. Mm. Let them rejoice before God. Yes, let them rejoice exceedingly. He's our kinsman redeemer. He is the Gaal. Here we are in heaven singing a new song. Look at this. Verse four. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Extol him who rides on the clouds by his name, Yah. And rejoice before him. Here he goes. Right. Riding on a cloud. Right. Here goes the whole setup. He's riding on a cloud now. Right. Verse 1 clues us in to Numbers chapter 10, verse 35. So you know that the ark is setting out. Right. The ark is now setting out. Right. And how does the ark set out? Well, the cloud has to go before King Jesus. Right. Because he has to hide his glory when he arises and he descends, right, from heaven with a shout, right? So he spreads the cloud, my goodness, right? He spreads the cloud, and guess what? <laughs> He's riding upon the cloud swiftly, right? Like lightning from east to west. He's riding on the cloud swiftly, like lightning from east to west. Mm. Extol him who rides on the clouds by his name, Yah. Mm. And rejoice before him, a father of the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy habitation. Okay, That's where we're going. We're going to his holy habitation. We're going to Mount Zion. <laughs> okay, God sets the solitary in families. He brings out those who are bound into prosperity, but the rebellious dwell in. In a dry land. Okay. Who's in the dry land? That's the wilderness. Right? That's the wilderness. That's where Babylon is at. Right? Outside. Wilderness is also the desert. It's a dry place, but he's going to make it even clearer. Look at the next verse, verse 7. Look at this. Oh God, when you went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, right? That's how he begins his march. <laughs> he marches through the wilderness. Right. First stop, those who are dead in Christ, Beza in the wilderness. He comes to the city of refuge, dead in Christ. He's making his march. Hmm. Remember, look at this. Verse one tells us Numbers chapter 10, verse 35. Go there. Right. Psalm 68, verse one tells you to go to Numbers 10, 35. Right. And so when you go to Numbers 10, 35, you see that the ark is setting now. You go to the book of Revelation, the only place where the ark is mentioned by name. And you see that that's when the door to heaven is open. Right? And so what happens when the door to heaven is open? God has to spread the cloud. Right? God has to spread the cloud. And so you follow the progression in Psalm 68, verse 4. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Extol him who rides on the clouds. My oh, goodness. By his name, Yah, and rejoice before him. Right? So we follow the progression. The ark has set out. The door to heaven is open. Here comes the cloud. He's coming like lightning from east to west. Where's his first stop? Hmm. Where's his first stop? <laughs> Verse 7. Oh God, when you went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness. Hallelujah. <laughs> first stop. Wilderness. Okay. You can't make it up even if you tried. First stop, wilderness. Right. But that's not all. Look what happens. Look what happens with his first stop. <laughs> verse 8. Because remember, in verse 7, you have to think about what you just said because there's a salah. And that's what we just did. We meditated. You broke it down through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we just hit the high points. But look at the next verse. <laughs> the earth shook. Right? <laughs> I mean, it's the same order. It's the same order no matter where you go. The earth shook. Greatest earthquake in human history. Right? When the door to heaven is open and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake. Oh. And great hail. Okay. 100 pounds each. Okay. Cloudy and dark day. Apocalypse. 
<laughs> just beginning the sevenfold vengeance. Just beginning. Mm. Right? But when God rides upon a cloud as he descends from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God. First stop. Beza in the wilderness. Right? When God makes his march, when he begins it. Oh God, when you went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, mm. the earth shook. Greatest earthquake in human history, but that's not all. The heavens also dropped rain at the presence of God. <laughs> and there's so much, there's so much you can extrapolate with that, but the heavens dropped rain. What what rain? Hailstones and coals of fire. He gave them hail for rain. Right? <laughs> Great hail. Not only is the earth shaken, right? But God is sending his judgment of a hundred pound hailstones. Okay. All around the planet. Gog and Magog, right? Defeated by the greatest earthquake in human history. Hundred pound hailstones, right? Babylon the Great, totally annihilated by the greatest earthquake in human history. And a hundred pound hailstones as well as the ten kings because it's a double destruction. As well as all across the planet because it's the apocalypse. Everything's shaped, built on the sand. You outside. Mm. That's not all. Look at this. Look at this progression. Look at this progression. Amen. Look at this progression. Sinai itself was moved at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You, O God, sent a plentiful rain whereby you confirmed your inheritance when it was weary. Your congregation dwelt in it. You, O God, provided from your goodness for the poor. Okay. Verse 11. Remember, we're just going over high points. That's how I said I want to maybe do another teaching to go a little bit deeper on the computer screen so you can see these words in the Hebrew. I'm just hitting the high points. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those who proclaimed it. Kings of army flee, they flee. And she who remains at home divides the spoil. Though you lie down among the sheepfolds, you will be like the wings of a dove covered with silver and her feathers with yellowed gold. Right there, he's talking about our rewards as we get to Mount Zion. But I can't break it down right now. I'm going to show you this stuff on the board first. When the Almighty scattered kings in it, it was as white as snow in Zalmon. Now look at this, verse 15. Verse 15. A mountain of God is the mountain of Bashan. Right? Here goes Bashan. Right? Remember, we're, we're, we're making our progression upwards. Psalm 68 shows us the whole progression, right? We started with the temple door to heaven opening because the ark has now set out, right? And then what happens? We see Jesus Christ riding upon a cloud. His name is Yah, right? And what happens? His first stop when he descends is that he marches through the wilderness, right? First as the Gaal Redeemer, because there's a, City of refuge in the wilderness. Dead in Christ rise first. Everybody in Biza. Biza means inaccessible spot. But then he has to also act as the avenger of blood. right? Because there's a woman in the wilderness. Who's a blasphemer. Who's drunk with blood. Babylon the Great. But we're making our progression. Amen. Because we got to go up. Okay. We going up. Yonder, to be with our Lord. <laughs> and what happens? Golan, right? Verse 15, a mountain of God is the mountain of Bashan. Golan was in Bashan, right? Golan was in Bashan. And we're going to see it right here. This is where you get the quote from, from Ephesians chapter 4, right? He's, he, 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 he's given us the progression, right? Because Golan, which is in Bashan, was a city of refuge. Golan means what? Captivity, captive. Mm. Right? Mm. A mountain of many peaks is the mountain of Bashan. <laughs> it's a city of refuge. We're going up yonder. That's not all. Look at this. Amen. Verse 16. Why do you fume with envy, you mountains of many peaks? This is the mountain which God desires to dwell in. Yes, the Lord will dwell in it forever. So remember, the psalmist David is talking about the place of refuge. We're going up, right? Tying us into these cities of refuge. Amen. It gets better, though. Look at verse 17. The chariots of God are 20,000 
even thousands of thousands. The Lord is among them as in Sinai in the holy place. Remember, he comes with, he's coming with the angels. Right? There's war in heaven. Michael and his angels fight with the dragon and his angels. Right? So he's coming with his angels because he's coming for the harvest. And the angels, the good ones, are coming to pick us up when Jesus Christ casting his sickle into the earth. Right? Because he spreads the clouds. Amen. He spreads the clouds. Right? The ark has set out. Right? The ark has set out, and God is riding upon a cloud swiftly, like lightning from east to west. And God says, The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of thousands. Right? They're all. <laughs> it's such going to be such a beautiful picture. It's going to be such a beautiful picture. Here, they, here we all are. We're all being caught up in this procession as he takes us out of this world to go to his world in the twinkling of an eye. Mm. Right? Look at it, though. Verse 18, here it goes. You have ascended on high. You have led captivity captive. Right? That's Golan. Right? Golan means captivity captive. Right? This is what Ephesians quotes. And so we're going up. Right? He's leading captivity captive because we're ascending on high. Right? You have ascended on high. You have led captivity captive. You have received gifts among men. We receive our rewards when we go through the open door. Right? The Bema seat. Right? Gold, silver, precious stones. Amen. We receive our rewards. Right? Here goes Golan in Bashan. Amen. He's leading captivity captive. The door to heaven is open. God has arose. He, he has stood up. And so now the ark is on the move. Amen. <laughs> and when the ark is on the move, Moses said, you have to say, let God arise. Right? Blessing has to come first. Mm -hmm. And as the door to heaven is open, what takes place? The cloud is spread. Extol him who rides upon the clouds by his name, Yah. And as he comes like lightning from east to west, first stop, you already know. You learn by repetition. You've been getting this. Right? You learn by repetition. We learn by repetition. First stop, you already know. First stop, wilderness. Mm. Okay. First stop, wilderness. He going to march. Right? He marching on the clouds, though. Amen. He's not touching the earth. But first stop, wilderness. Mm. Everybody in the dust, get up. Mm. Everybody in the dust, in the plain place. Right? Everybody in the wilderness, in the dust, get up. That's in the safe place, in the inaccessible spot. Beza. Mm. Okay, but his enemies have to be scattered as well. Same time. Okay. Who else in that wilderness? Well, okay. Number one casualty, dark and cloudy day, end of the third beast kingdom. That's it. That's all. That's all she wrote. That's all he wrote. Mm. They say Babylon the Great. That's all you got? Well, Babylon the Great, I thought you had provisions. Well, Babylon the Great, I thought you had bunkers. Well, Babylon the Great, I thought you was ready. Well, Babylon the Great, I thought you was never going to know the loss of children or widowhood. What happened? Sit in silence. Shh, be quiet forever. Uh, you ain't got no answer. No more, huh, Babylon the Great? Drunk with all that blood. Pay for it. Mm. <laughs> the chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of thousands. The Lord is among them as in Sinai in the holy place. <laughs> you have ascended on high. You have led captivity captive. You have received gifts among men. Even the rebellious that the Lord God might dwell there. Mm. Here he goes. Verse 19. Verse 19. Verse 19. Amen. Verse 19. Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits. The God of our salvation. Salah. So now he says, pause on this. What is daily loading us with benefits? You look at the Hebrew. That word for daily load, 
right, daily loads us, that word is amas, ayin mem samit. It means to carry a load, right? It means to carry a load, right? Well, what is shikim? Have you been over this? Shikim is what? Shikim is a ridge, right? It means between the shoulders, the neck, right? It's where you carry your burden, right? So Shechem is between two mountains. There's a mountain called the mountain of blessing, the mountain of curse. So what you going to do? Are you going to listen to God? Are you going to give him your burdens? Right? Are you going to allow him to carry your load? Right? So that he can daily load you with benefits because his burden is light and his yoke is easy? Or are you going to be on the mountain of cursing by trying to do things your way? Right. By trying to be outside with Babylon the Great. Right. By trying to lift yourself up as being proud. Right. <laughs> well, the choice is yours. And so for those of us who on this day are found in Christ, because Shechem represents those of us who are alive and remain. Amen. God says, blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits. Shechem, the God of our salvation. Yeshua, right? we're all caught up. You see, we're going up, amen? We started in Bezer, okay? Ramoth, Golan, Kedesh, Shechem, right? <laughs> but it gets better. Verse 20, our God is the God of salvation and to God belong the escapes from death. Hallelujah. Well, that's Hebron. That's Hebron. There's just so much to speak about Hebron, Amen. There's so much to speak about Hebron, and I already spoke about it a little bit, but to God belong the what? But to God the Lord belong the escapes from death. <laughs> Samson portrayed it, right? When the pillars are removed, when wisdom builds her house, when the pillars are removed, all of us who are part of those of us who are alive and remain, we're all going to be caught up. We're going to escape from death. Amen. And then what happens? Sudden destruction comes upon everybody left behind inside that temple. Verse 21. But God will wound the head of his enemies. Mm. All of us who escape from death when Samson pulls out the pillars. What happens? <laughs> verse 21. Very next verse. But God will wound the head of his enemy. <laughs> Sudden destruction. Everybody inside the temple of Dagon that was making fun of Samson died. Sudden destruction. And we can go on and on and on, amen. The hairy scalp of the one who still goes on in his trespasses. The Lord said, I will bring back from Bashan. Back to Bashan. He keeps on pointing us to Bashan. That's Golan. Golan is in Bashan. He says this. The Lord said, I will bring back from Bashan, right? Those, those who have died in Christ, right? Because Golan and Bashan represents the dead in Christ. Look what he says. The Lord said, I will bring back from Bashan, that city of refuge. I will bring them back from the depths of the sea. Right? He's going to bring them back from the depths of the sea, right? They're going to rise up. He's going to bring them back from the depths of the sea. They're under the earth, right? You know, it, when this was written, that was Abraham's bosom, right? That was Abraham's bosom. They were under the sea. And the good part, Abraham's bosom, right? But Bashan, which is what we're talking about, represents the dead in Christ, right? Because uh, Golan, which is in Bashan, was on the east side of the Jordan River, Representing the dead in Christ rising first. It's just, it's just so beautiful. Because we're talking about a procession. right? We're talking about a procession upward. Verse 23. That your foot may crush them in blood. And the tongues of your dogs may have their portion from your enemies. Right? All of our enemies are under our feet. Right? <laughs> All of our enemies are under our feet when we make this procession up. Right? We're glorified in our... Body like unto God, Jesus, his glorious body. Here it goes. Verse 24. They have seen your procession. Amen. This is the procession. From Bezer up to Hebron. 
beginning when the ark sets out, verse 1. <laughs> and God comes down, extol him who rides upon a cloud by his name, Yah. Mm. They have seen your procession, O God, the procession of my God, my king into the sanctuary. Mm. Kidesh, sanctuary, right? 444, doors open, right? All of us who have been caught up in the clouds, we meet Jesus in the air. We extol him who rides upon the clouds by his name, Yah. He comes like lightning from east to west. He is our Gaal, the Redeemer. Hallelujah. Amen. And so keep me in your prayers, child of God. I pray that you learn a little bit today. You could read the rest at your own leisure. Um, because, you know, I really kind of want to go on the computer to show you like the little intricacies. Well, now I shouldn't say little. The big intricacies that you can see in Psalm 68 when you like break down the Hebrew words. Because it was blowing my mind. I literally had to like, you know, take a break. <laughs> it was just so much. Right. I was like looking at every word right in the Hebrew in Psalm 68. And, and there's like, you know, it's just it's just so many different connections. I said, I said thank you, Lord. But I got to take a break. <laughs> my, my head was right. It was just too much. Amen. But praise God. I thank you for the overflow, the abundance. Hallelujah. I thank you, King Jesus. Keep on overflowing. Amen. Because I want to keep on pouring out so that we could all be strengthened in the faith. <laughs> but praise God. Maybe you can see something in Psalm 68 and uh, edify the body of Christ with the revelation that God would give you. Because Psalm 68, whew, it's all about the rapture, right? As you can see, tying us into the six cities of refuge with our procession upwards from the wilderness, <laughs> Bezer to Hebron, last stop, off to Mount Zion. In a twinkling of an eye, hope to see you there, Maranatha. Amen. Praise King Jesus. I'm thankful that the Lord led your feet here to sit down at the table and whet your appetite. May you come back next week if the Lord says the same. For more teachings of when the temple in heaven is open, everything will change. If you want further study, come to my YouTube page as you can see on the screen. And if you want to support the ministry, please go to PreachTheLoveOfGod.com to get all your merchandise to be a witness through fashion for the soon coming King, Jesus Christ. Rapture soon. Amen.